uh, measures of central tendency and variation like mean, median, mode, variance, experiments, hypotheses, outcomes. We get nerdy with it today. Let's talk about math. If you're one of the select few that doesn't shiver or vomit at the sight of the title of this video, then today's your lucky day because I will be giving you my take on this question. How much math do you really need to know for data science? And why should you trust me? That is a great question. Maybe, I don't know, maybe don't trust me. But I do have some qualifications. I have a math degree that uh, nearly destroyed me, but that's a story for another day. And I also have four years of professional work experience as a data scientist at three different companies across industries. Using this background as a basis, I'll be tackling the following two frequently asked questions. One, which math concepts do I need to know? And two, if I struggle with some or all math aspects, is data science still a good option for me? I'm sure most of you know that without math, there is no data science. It's in the science part. The science that we use in data science is actually math. More of an art, but that's neither here nor there. Anyways, the main four branches of math you'll encounter within data science are statistics and probability, linear algebra, mathematical optimization, and calculus. Now, two of these subfields, linear algebra and calculus, form the foundations for many other mathematical subfields, including the other two that are used in data science, stats and optimization. The way I've structured this video is that I'll be starting with a quick overview of each of the four subfields, in addition to their roles in data science. And then I'll be getting into a concrete overview of which aspects of each of these subfields are used day to day as a data scientist. Throughout the conversation, I hope to shine some light on the question, how math savvy do I really need to be in order to thrive as a data scientist on a scale of zero to hero? <laughs> so let's jump into the subfield overviews, starting with statistics and probability. The reason I'm starting with this one is because it's the most important. I'm just gonna say it. If you hate statistics, data science isn't a good option for you. You need to have a strong grasp on statistics and basic probability in order to understand how to properly process and interpret data before you can make any magic from it, especially if you want that magic to be statistically sound, which you probably should. Statistics is defined by Merriam-Webster as branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. In other words, we use statistics to extract insights and draw conclusions from data. As you could see, the definition of statistics accounts for a huge part of what data science is. It's no surprise that the terms data science and statistics are sometimes used interchangeably. Probability, on the other hand, is defined by Wikipedia as branch of mathematics concerning numerical descriptions of how likely an event is to occur or how likely it is that a proposition is true. In other words, probability is quantifying uncertainty, using some proven mathematical methods to tell us how confident we can be in our decisions or conclusions that we draw. We use statistics to draw conclusions and probability to quantify the uncertainty behind them. As these two branches of mathematics are so intertwined, especially at an introductory level, from here on out, if you hear me say stats, just assume I mean the broader joint subfield of stats and probability. Thank you. You don't have to go very deep into data science to see where stats is used. Starting with the very definition of data itself, this kind of comes from the field of statistics, and also the basic definitions and terms around how to use it, work with it, and process it. If you've dug into data science at all, you've most definitely scratched the surface at least into the terms I'm referring to here. Luckily, none of these concepts are particularly difficult to grasp. If you've taken a data management or statistics course in high school or college university, you've probably encountered all of them already. But as straightforward as they may seem, they definitely cannot be overlooked. It's important to have an extremely rock solid understanding of these basics as they form the foundation for how we work with data. So don't just skim over them, understand them with your whole heart. I have two really great blog posts that nicely go over these terms, so check those out. All right, next up we have a linear algebra. I don't know why this represents linear algebra, it doesn't, anyways. <laughs> I did kind of order these in order of importance, so do know that linear algebra is what I see as the second most important branch of math used in data science. Going back to Merriam-Webster to help us define this one, linear algebra is theory of systems, linear equations, matrices, determinants, vector spaces, and linear transformations. In other words, linear algebra is good old algebra applied to multiple dimensions represented through vectors and matrices. Its role in data science isn't nearly as obvious as it is for statistics, 
But I would argue that it's equally as important if you're working with any kind of machine learning, which most data scientists do. Why is that? Because the input for machine learning algorithms data is at least two dimensional. Think about it. We have rows and columns. And anytime you're working with multiple dimensions, you need linear algebra. So if you don't understand the basics of vector and matrix operations, you probably won't be able to understand how most algorithms in data science work. All right, to address this, I'm gonna expect some comments here saying things like, but damsel in data, most machine algorithms can be executed through a single line of Python code these days. Why do I really need to know or understand the math that's going on behind them? And to that I say, you're right. <laughs> But if you don't understand what's going on under the hood of the algorithm, you won't be able to apply that algorithm optimally, and you certainly will not be able to interpret its output as results. For this subfield, you probably need a little bit more coverage of linear algebra than you would get in, let's say, a, a high school math course. But if you're interested and you enjoy learning about math, then I definitely think you can learn enough on your own through the interwebs. To get you started, I've left a great link in the description below on all of the basic linear algebra terms that you'll need to know for data science. All right, the next subfield we're talking about is optimization. And this is the one out of the four that some people probably haven't heard of, I'm gonna guess. And it's because you wouldn't really encounter this term anywhere unless you pursue math after high school. But fear not, it's nothing scary. It's actually really fun. My favorite math courses in my degree were my optimization courses. It's like solving puzzles. It's super fun. It's great. You're gonna love it. So what is math? mathematical optimization exactly. From Wikipedia, we have it stated as the selection of a best element with regard to some criterion from some set of available alternatives. In my words, it's using math to find the optimal solution to a problem. That's it. You've probably done basic optimization problems even in elementary school math. You know, things like uh, given 20 meters of fence, find the dimensions of length and width that'll give you the maximum area, that's an optimization problem. Or, you know, um, what combination of coins should you give to the cashier in order to minimize the change that you get? Nobody pays with coins anymore, but you know. And now it does get a little bit more complicated in the context of data science, but it's nothing that's unmanageable if you have a good understanding of the foundations of math. So if you know something about calculus, linear algebra, and you like to solve puzzles, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you like to solve puzzles at least a little bit. Yeah, you do. If this kind of fits your profile, then you can definitely learn about optimization um, on your own online. And I have left a resource in the description as per usual. But where do we use optimization in data science? Similarly to how we use linear algebra in data science, it comes in mainly in the machine learning algorithms. And optimization is used in pretty much every algorithm from the simplest example of linear regression to the most complicated, deepest neural networks that you can work with. Optimization is used from head to toe. It's also used in other parts of the machine learning process such as in algorithms for optimal hyperparameter tuning and uh, feature selection. If you've heard of a little something called gradient descent, one of the most used algorithms in machine learning, that is actually an optimization algorithm. And it's also the perfect segue into our final subfield of math that we're talking about today, calculus. Even though I put this one last, it shouldn't be overlooked once again, because it is pretty embedded into all of the other subfields that we've already talked about. For example, the gradient descent algorithm I just mentioned, but luckily, you really don't need to be a calculus pro to thrive in data science. I can say that because I am nowhere near being a pro in calculus. My least favorite and lowest marks in my math degree were always my calculus courses. And in fact, I barely passed uh, vector calculus or multivariable calculus in my second year. If you're my employer, please don't hold that against me. So if you hate calculus, let this be some reassurance to you that you can still be an awesome data scientist as long as you have a strong grasp on the fundamentals. My favorite definition of calculus is the one provided by Oxford, and that is the branch of mathematics that deals with the finding and properties of derivatives and integrals of functions. So if we're talking math concepts that you need to know, you need to understand what it means to find a derivative, an integral, and a limit. Good news, unless you're doing a data science job that's heavy and reading a lot of research papers, you won't really need to know how to apply the methods and processes to do these calculations yourself. 
So no need to go back to your math books and try to remember how to integrate these super complex functions. You don't need to know that. Honestly, I'm not confident that I could solve a high school calculus problem right now without reviewing some notes first. So really, it's not important to be a pro here. Cannot stress that enough. How much do you need to know? Enough about derivatives, integrals, limits, and gradients to be able to follow along the steps of the many machine learning and optimization algorithms that involve calculus. I previously brought up gradient descent. If you can, if you know enough calculus to be able to follow along that algorithm and understand what's going on there, that's a really great start. If you can get through all of linear regression, understanding from head to toe how linear regression works, then honestly, you probably know enough calculus to survive in data science. If you didn't take calculus in high school, it may take some time to catch up on these concepts. Um, but again, I really do think it's doable to learn on your own if the interest is there and there are links below. I want to stress that, of course, if you're in a role that's heavier on the deep learning side of things or it's heavy in uh, research work such as reading papers or developing algorithms from scratch or implementing algorithms from a research paper into code, then you might need to have a bit of a stronger understanding of calculus and all of these other math fields in general. But for most data science roles, a basic understanding of the four fields that I mentioned is all you need. All right, so now that we know all about these lovely subfields, let's talk about their application in specific data science roles. I've broken down the parts of a data scientist's job that involve math as follows. Experimental design, commonly applied as A-B testing, data processing for model preparation or analysis, and modeling building, optimizing, and performance evaluation. Starting with experimental design. For me personally, concepts from stats are definitely the ones that I use most day to day as a data scientist. In addition to stats being used heavily for data processing and modeling, it's also used in experimental design, the process of setting up experiments to test hypotheses and make decisions. A common application of this is the well-known concept of A-B testing, comparing two options to see which yields a better outcome. This is often used for for comparing user interfaces or marketing strategies, but it can also be used to compare performance of models, right? So you can build a model that performs some sort of task and now we want to compare it to maybe an old model that was used before, or maybe no model, maybe just some other rules-based strategy or a random approach. And we want to measure which result is actually better. And we would do this using statistical testing techniques. Here, it's important to understand many concepts such as p-values, hypothesis testing, and more. All right, let's move on to the math we use for data processing. Here, we need to be familiar with stats and maybe a bit of Linelge to understand how to manipulate the data before feeding it into its downstream machine learning model or experiment. Certain algorithms require certain distributions or formats of data, so we really need to understand the algorithm that we're feeding the data into in order to know how to process it beforehand. So I'm definitely not going to go over all of these concepts because there are definitely many sources online explaining them a lot better than I could, plus I'm lazy. But here are the main mathy parts of data processing that I've come across in my data science roles. For modeling, this is really where Linalge, optimization, and a bit of calculus come in. We need to be able to understand the algorithms, what's going on under the hood, so that we can optimize the implementation of them and also make use of the results and apply them to the real world. Once again, not gonna dive into all of these because we would be here all day, but here are some of the modeling concepts that involve a lot of math to get help get you started. That was a doozy. But hopefully it sends the message that math is widely used in data science. However, in many modern data science roles, your work will be more about computer science and communication and won't feel directly as math intensive as the last math course you took even if that was in high school. Unless your work is highly research focused, you just need to know the foundations to be able to understand what you're doing, but you don't need to be a math genius by any means. So if you love solving problems with data, but you don't have a strong math background, I would encourage you to still look into it because there's probably still a role that's out there for you. To sum up, you don't need to be obsessed with math, but if you hate math, you'll probably hate data science. That is it for me. If you have any follow-up questions on this or if there's a topic in here that you'd like me to dive deeper in on, please leave it in the comments. Feedback is always welcomed and encouraged, especially in the form of liking or sharing this video if you found it useful. It means so, so much to me, so thank you in advance. Thanks for tuning in. Have a data-licious day, and I will catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>
Bye.